Hello everybody, it's Stuart A. Swordlow. And Janet Diane Moya Swordlow. And this is the Expansions News Podcast for, I think it's uh, considered the second week of December 2017. It's on or around Pearl Harbor Day, so you get an idea. Okay? And um, we have a lot of news, so I will just get right to the point. And uh, a lot has been going on with uh, Trump's speeches, and I will get to all of that. But as a backdrop to all of this, according to um, a pretty respectable uh, site on the Internet, it was in December of 2013 that President Barack Obama urged Israel to hand over the holiest sites of Christianity and Judaism to Islamic groups. And when they refused, finally, on Christmas Day, 2016, just one year ago, a final act against what they call this, a final despicable act against Christians and Jews, Barack Obama effectively signed over Christianity's and Judaism's holy insight, holiest sites to radical Muslim groups and actually helped write the UN draft to do so. And Barack Obama refused to veto a Security Council resolution condemning the settlement construction in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, this resolution effectively turned over the old city of Jerusalem, which is the Israeli capital, to the Palestinian groups. And the holiest sites of Christianity, according to the UN and Obama, are no longer in Israeli land. So in effect, he has undermined Christianity and Judaism, and yet he claims to be a Christian, but we know he's a Muslim. Anyway, here's a very key point. The terror group Hamas called for a day of rage, urging Palestinians to protest President Trump's plan to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital and move the U.S. Embassy there from Tel Aviv. And it added that making Jerusalem the Israeli capital was crossing a red line. Well, hello, it already is the capital. And according to Hamas, we call on the people of Palestine to declare rage today and deny the U.S. plan to move uh, the embassy to, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and recognize it as its capital. It also called upon the youth and the Palestinian resistance in the West Bank to respond with all means available against the United States' decision and to uh, uh, actually protest in front of all Israeli consulates and embassies everywhere. Senior Hamas chief Ishmael Hania also called upon the people to stand against the efforts to Judaize Jerusalem, it's already a Jewish city, according to the official group account in Arabic. Now here's something you should know. The reports that are given in Arabic are in much stronger language than the translations in English and other languages, and they do that on purpose. Um, however, the move of the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to the Holy City could take up to four years. It can't happen in a day. It will take years to actually accomplish this. And by the way, um, the nation of Vanuatu in the South Pacific already recognizes Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, and the president of Vanuatu says he has a very strong connection to Judaism and the Jewish people, and we know that there are uh, tribes in the South Pacific who actually are Jewish. Well, they've reason. been found singing the Jewish songs yeah. and no one knows where that came from, so to speak. Also, the Czech Republic this past week recognized West Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, and many of the Christian African nations are also about to do the same thing. So this is like a global thing going on. What I find ironic, maybe comical, is that the Republic of Taiwan recognizes Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, but Israel doesn't recognize Taiwan as a country. That's odd. Yes, they recognize China, and they're afraid to recognize Taiwan because they want Chinese aid. So, sorry, Taiwan, which, by the way, is really Japanese. Anyway, according to the Hamas Charter, which outlines key principles and policies, the terror group aims to establish a state of Palestine with Jerusalem as its capital, and not one stone of the city can be given up. Well, that leaves room for negotiation. And it says, Jerusalem is the capital of Palestine. Its religious, historic, and civil, civiliza, civ, civ, civilizational status 
is fundamental to the Arabs, Muslims, and the world at large. Its Islamic and Christian holy places belong exclusively to the Palestinian people, well, tell that to the Pope, and to the Arab and Islamic Ummah. Do you know what an Ummah is? Yeah, it's like the, the, the mother of Arab uh, civilization. So, actually, that's not true, because Jerusalem has been Jewish for 3,000 years. Now, Turkish President Erdogan, he just likes to get himself in trouble, said that moving the capital was a red line for Muslims. And uh, actually, he also said today it was like pulling the cap on a grenade and throwing it. And he threatened to sever diplomatic ties with Israel and the United States if they did this. Well, first of all, the United States is doing this, not Israel, so why would you punish Israel for something that the United States is doing? Now, diplomatic officials said in a statement, this is from Israel. Now, Israelis officials blasted Turkey's President Erdogan and said that Jerusalem has been the capital of the Jewish people for 3,000 years and the capital of the current state of Israel for 70 years, regardless of whether Erdogan recognizes this or not. And he said that the Turkish president, uh, which currently holds the chairmanship of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, uh, would immediately call for a summit uh, to set the entire Islamic world in motion. And in Turkey, Erdogan said, he would follow the struggle to the very last moment with determination and would even go right up to cutting off diplomatic relations with Israel. And uh, according to Israel, Israeli Transportation and Intelligence Minister Yisrael Katz, who by the way wants to become Prime Minister, he said Israel does not take orders from Turkey. Israel is a sovereign state and Jerusalem is its capital. There is no more historically justified and correct step now than recognizing Jerusalem, which has been the capital of the Jewish people for the past 3,000 years and as the capital and is the capital of Israel. And he says to Erdogan, the days of the Sultan and the Ottoman Empire have passed. And that's true. You know, for several hundred years, Turkey or the Ottoman Empire did occupy Jerusalem and Middle East and Egypt, but that ended around 1918. Now, here's something interesting because Trump didn't start this. In 1995, the U.S. Congress passed the Jerusalem Embassy Act, recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital. That was 22 years ago, people, and said that the U.S. Embassy, embassy should be moved there. So this is not news. It's already an act in the Congress. But they have put a waiver in which said the president, to the president that will temporarily postpone the move on grounds of national security. And so that's why it's never taken effect. Now, I need to tell you something uh, very uh, interesting because, um, first of all, this is significant that Trump did this at this moment. Uh, I have been telling you for a long time that they're about to build a third temple of Solomon. You should also realize that in the United States, the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. is a duplicate of Solomon's temple. So maybe is that the third temple of Solomon? And that's why, and now, and I told you this when we, when we did our prophecy webinar, there are only two countries on earth that declare that God has given them the right to exist. One is Israel, and the other is the United States. That's why, people, there's such a close relationship. With and do this. you know what the Palestinians' chief representative to Britain said about this? What did he say? He said that Trump is declaring war in the Middle East. He is declaring war against 1.5 billion Muslims and hundreds of millions of Christians that are not going to accept the holy shrines to be totally under the hegemony of Israel. Well, first of all, let me explain something. When those shrines were under the control of Israel, everyone had access to all the shrines. When the Muslims controlled it, no one had access to it except Muslims. So who would you rather have in charge? On Jerusalem, isn't there, aren't there a lot of people of all nations of course and they all are. religions? It really is an international city, very much like New York, and that's why they have very similar shrines. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say something. 
I've mentioned over the last few weeks that Saudi Arabia and Israel have gotten closer. I assure you that the Saudis are okay with this because remember I told you last week that Saudi Arabia asked Israel to declare war on Hamas. And it is only Hamas that is having an issue with this. So the Saudis want to eradicate them. And I'm sure they did all of this to do this to Hamas and start something so that they could end them once and for all. I guarantee you that that's what's happening. And in addition, the Supreme Court this week allowed the Trump administration to fully enforce the ban on travel to the United States by the six mostly Muslim countries um, that before that they had stopped the ban. Uh, now they said that uh, this will go through. Opponents of this and previous versions say that it's a bias against Muslims and they re reinforced this by the Trump's recently uh, retweeting anti-Muslim videos. And I said, somebody take his phone away. President Trump's anti-Muslim prejudice is no secret. He has repeatedly confirmed this and blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on. And uh, the ACLU is representing some people who are, are part of the ban. The ban applies to travelers from Chad, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria, but it, but previously, and what is being upheld, it is also against uh, citizens of North Korea and some uh, against Venezuela. Um, and uh, we must also remember, though, people, that Trump recently expelled hundreds of Russian diplomats and closed all the Russian consulates and compounds. So that's something that also needs to be addressed. And speaking of Russia, and what I call stupid news, Russia's Olympic team has been barred from the 2018 Winter Games in South Korea. Uh, the country's government officials are forbidden to attend, and its flag will not be displayed at the opening ceremony, and its anthem will not be played. Well, I think that's prejudiced. Okay? And so I think it's worse than the, the Trump's Muslim ban. It said any athletes from Russia who receive special dispensation to compete will do so as individuals wearing a neutral uniform and the official record books will forever show that Russia won zero medals. That's very odd. That's just plain freaking nasty. Well, it's just odd. And you know why it's being done? Why South Korea did this? Because Russia supports North Korea. That's why. And that's the only, only reason. And they're saying, of course, it's because of the doping. And the International Olympic Committee, after completing its own investigations, reiterated that it has been known for more than a year that the Russian penalties for doping so, were so severe that they were without precedent in, the, in Olympic history. And uh, barring Russia's team, Olympic officials left the door open for some Russian athletes uh, with histories of rigorous drug testing may petition for permission to compete in neutral uniform. Well, if I was a Russian athlete going to the games, I'm not going to compete for, uh, as myself. I'm representing my country. Mm -hmm. So screw you, South Korea and the Olympic Committee. But this is the first time we've heard that they can compete as individuals in neutral uniforms unless I'm missing something here. Well, here's what's happened. Because in the 2014 Sochi Games in, in Russia, uh, they said that a team assembled by Russia's sports ministry tampered with more than 100 urine samples to conceal the evidence of top athlete steroid use throughout the course of the competition, and that to this day they're trying to remove Russian medals and re-give them to other people who may have deserved them. And the Russian Olympic Committee was fined $15 million, which they said will be put towards drug testing. Okay. That's and, a lot of drug testing. Yeah, really. Uh, and it says, now here's the thing, there was a defector from Russia and he, uh, who came uh, to the Olympic Committee and ratted on the Olympic team. And his name is Dr. Rochenkov, who is living in an undisclosed location in the United States under protection of federal authorities. In August, a film called Icarus detailed Dr. Rochenkov's move to the United States in a tell-all account, and it was released with addition to sworn testimony and forensic evidence that the film cited. So this is a CIA slash NSA operation against the new Soviet Union. And they paid this Rochenkov to come here and probably gave him mansion and Rolls Royce and a new name and blah, blah. So what Russian wouldn't take that, okay? Shame on you.
Dr. Rachenkov. You should be ashamed of yourself. Anyway, um, can we go to Canada now? I guess. Well, I know you're gonna, you have this story. Do you want me to save it for it? No, I don't have that story. You tell me it did. Because a group of Canadian spelunkers, eh, discovered a huge cave system with mind-blowing interior right in the middle of a major Quebec city using an unlikely combination. How did they find it? High-tech radio equipment and a dousing rod. High-tech equipment and a dousing rod. Hmm, that sounds likely. It's called the Cavernicole Cave in Pius XII Park in Montreal. It's well known and well visited by tourists, but until recently, it was believed to be very small. But in October, cave explorers stumbled upon a great cavern that had eluded people for centuries. Really? Because what they found behind decomposed limestone was a huge dark void, maybe they found that in Trump's head, that required them to come back with a ladder. Now get this, people. The void has nearly 20-foot high ceilings and perfectly vertical wall as if made by human hands. Hmm. Yet the explorers are quite sure no one has ever visited there before. I urge you to look at the links that I have posted on this podcast. That wall, it looks like a subway tunnel. That is not natural. Okay? So really, they're not quite sure. It's just a scam. These walls are definitely made by hand or machines. And they knew it was there all along and purposely hidden what was in it that they cleared out and now they can show people. So, and it says, it goes on to say, the walls fit into each other perfectly like pieces of a puzzle. That sounds natural to me. And it says, now listen to this quote. It's the kind of discovery you make once in a lifetime. Normally, you have to go to the moon to find that kind of thing. How do you know? That's a very odd quote. The moon? Why? How do you know you find such a thing on the moon? There's something mysterious here. Something smells in Quebec. And it's not French fries. Or beer, by the way. Okay, so obviously this cave system has been closed to the public for a long time. So artifacts could be removed and uh, only allow the small openings so people would just... No. By the way, I just want to make a, a statement here because I don't think we have it on our news here that the, there are fires now in the L.A. area uh, and over 200,000 people so far have been evacuated and many homes in very expensive neighborhoods have been burnt to the ground. So uh, we wish those people well. Uh, interesting, fire on the West Coast and here in the middle of the country we have severe cold and snow and we're under winter storm watch again. Fire and ice. Fire and ice. And by the way, where are the people who promised to come and shovel? Because they weren't there this morning. Well, I, I just want to make a, a comment. I'll be mild. Uh, it's interesting to us the comments that we find on the on YouTube. Which after, we do read. Which we do read and, and sometimes this is because last week there was one person, maybe, two people, there was in several languages, that commented on my shirt, that it, my Russian shirt that I wore. It had nothing to do with the Illuminati, even though there was a Romanov symbol on it. I wore shirts that represent what I'm talking about during the podcast. And it's nothing, it doesn't mean I'm an Illuminati agent. I did not blow up the convention center Listen in Manchester. If you're an Illuminati agent, would you really admit it publicly? You're right, so... Maybe you are an Illuminati agent. Yes, and so someone gave me a nice Christmas gift with a symbol for the Sacred Medical Order of the Knights of Hope, which I don't know if you can read that. And so I'm wearing the Knights of Hope emblem as well. No, it doesn't mean I'm worshipping the Pope or reptilians. But you're trying to trigger people, right? Because I want them to see how stupid it is to take what I'm wearing and extrapolate that into something it is not. But they tried that. That tells me a lot about your mentality. People just look for trouble. And also, um, these people, there was one particular person who made a video that had my uh, investiture picture from the Sacred Medical Order and said I was being indoctrinated by the Templars. <laughs> First of all, 
That picture had nothing to do with the, the Templars were nowhere around there. And if you knew what the Templars really were, that wouldn't be such a bad thing anyway. And about the nasty comments that people make about my co-host, uh, really, uh, these are from jealous men and women. They're je the men are jealous of me because I have you, mm -hmm. and the women are jealous of you because you have me. So either way, you're bad. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and so Janet is not my handler. I, I thought I was. Well, this is really only, a shock. Only when you burn me with cigarettes. In front of people. When you, you burn me you with really cigarettes. Break yeah, the news yes. to me. And in fact, she's the one that saved me from my death. And she is everything a mother, a wife, and a woman should be. Mm, so I just wanted to Thank say you. that. I told him to say that, though, because I'm his handler. <laughs> you had no idea I was going to say no, that. No, I didn't. So. No. Thank you. I'm very sweet. You're welcome. All right. Now it's your turn. Speak fast. I will. Um, now, here we were, you were talking about, first of all, they were asking the, what, the, who was supposed to have a day of rage? The Palestinians. Okay, now I've been talking to you about Trump, because Trump also talked about rage and everything, and I've been telling you that they're trying to stir this up inside of people, because that has to do with the animal mind fighting, mm -hmm. and they want you to fight against each other. So, rage to me is one of those programming trigger words that you have to be careful about. So, because it's interesting, we have fire, fire is hot, fire is burning, it can be transformative or it can be a sign of rage. And we've also been talking about programming triggers, especially with the sexual stuff, which of course I'll get to later. Of course you But it started with Harvey Weinstein, and Harvey we talked to you about... Actually, it started with uh, Cosby. Don't well, true, way back when, but the Harvey thing was really what's mm -hmm. been out there now. But we talked about Harvey being a symbol of Harvey, the, the White Rabbit movie that was on. Mm -hmm. So White Rabbit programming, um, that's a huge trigger that's going on right now. So what do we have with the fires? We have all over the internet, quote, driver pulls over, this, he is escaping the fires, mm -hmm. to save a rabbit oh, as that. the blaze rages How by the highway. How do you know there was a rabbit in there? I don't know. I didn't saw watch it. hopping around. I don't know. But he pulls over to save the rabbit. That's a programming trigger. And he, we have more as Blaze rages by the highway. Mm -hmm. so, That's weird, isn't it? Yes. It's very strange. And then, right under that, two or three stories down, it has more evacuations as California fire rages. So just like I told you about the time travel incident mm -hmm. last week, if you watch that podcast, you're going to have to go back and look at it. Mm -hmm. If you didn't. But these are trigger words that are designed to evoke certain thoughts, feelings, and emotions to put you in a really bad place. Mm -hmm. So, I can't think on that. All right, and then I'm also, as I'm telling you about these programming triggers, things that they're trying to pull out and start putting into the subconscious mind for new world religion. So we have fire, uh, Fox News reports, New York Times reporter claims President Trump talks to the dead. He does. This is, what they, this is the title of the article, because they want you to, to get this in your mind, President talks to but death. he sees them. I'm going to tell you. Okay. So this reporter um, from the New York Times, Yam, Yamichi Alcindor, Could says be. either thinks President Donald Trump has the ability to communicate with the deceased or she made an embarrassing mistake on live TV. So this is worthy of news, right? Because mm -hmm. they want to get these terms mm -hmm. out to you. Mm -hmm. He claims he can still communicate with the, or, and she claimed that he can still communicate with the late Fox News founder, Roger Ailes. He died from a heart attack from being attacked. The reporter appeared on MSNBC's Hardball with Chris Matthews and said that Trump speaks to Ailes on a regular basis when discussing who the president takes seriously and respects. Quote, who he actually pays attention to are all the people he calls up on the phone, Roger Ailes, all these other people that are just out in the world. Did That's what she, she that? said this. Recently? Yes. She's not too bright, is she? So she was quickly corrected by the host who chimed in and said, years ago, Roger Ailes. Then they laughed at her guffaw, and then this person who's reporting says, basically, it's possible that Alcindor simply meant to say a different name, or perhaps she didn't realize that Ailes had died on May 18th at the age of 77 from complications of a head injury. But it goes on to say... <laughs> His wife smacked him in the head. Why did you, yeah. do, why did you do that? If she has some sort of scoop that involves Trump, get this, practicing mediumship, well, that would be major news. This is well, they did this did make major news. But And also, when he announced the Jerusalem thing, he was slurring his speech, yeah. supposedly. But this is putting into your mind practicing mediumship, talking to the dead, president, because you're going to read this because it's about the president. I, talk, I talk to the dead. Yeah, that's your a whole different case, as you know. Yeah, I'm a case. And then we have, a, you've talked some, you know, bad news, bad things going on with Obama. 
Well, apparently Fox Business's Lou Dobbs had some bad things to say yeah, oh, yeah. to Obama. Good. Because Obama apparently said this week, think before you speak, think before you tweet. Now, they're claiming this is in reference to Trump's oh, tweets. Duh. But they, they don't exactly say this. Lou Dobbs says, quote, I think the U.S. Marshals should follow Obama, and any time he wants to go follow the president like he is and behave, I mean, this is just bad manners. It's boorish. It's absurd. It doesn't re he doesn't realize how foolish he looks. I mean, he should be brought back by the marshals. Isn't there some law that says presidents shouldn't be attacking pres a sitting presidents? Then Dobbs' guest, Steve Forbes, said that Obama doesn't realize, that doesn't realize he doesn't matter anymore. Right. And uh, Obama then pointed out that he has 100 million followers or more than any other people who use it more often. That Obama does. Yes. And we want to remember, because I always tell you this, that Trump and Obama are cousins. Just like Hillary, and they're all cousins, that's they're all why related. They look alike, right? And they're all, that's right, because you don't realize that, but if you trace their ancestry back, they're all related to the Queen of England. So they're Ooh. cousins, so remember that. Now, this was, yeah, go ahead. here's another trigger scenario for you. This happened again in my home country, Washington State. Mm. There was an armed Washington State man oh, yeah. back in November 25, it says, in Parkland, Washington, that stopped his car in the middle of an intersection last month to fight lizard people. Uh, yes, but why? Lizard people, because Trump told him to. To fight lizard A people. A 54-year-old man stopped his white SUV in the middle of an intersection, waved an AK-47, and screamed about sending in the news and lizard people. This obviously is a programmed individual, and again, they want this out Something about lizard people. And that's why Prince Harry, when he was with Melania, he was like this. Yeah, why don't you explain it? Because you t have told a lot of things. Like, the but, lady. And those comments, mm -hmm. they're, they're, you think that you're telling us what these symbols mean? I'm sorry, you're not. We already know what the symbols, because we know what the symbol. we're told what they're mean from the people who know about the He's symbols. He's talking to me? Exactly. And then, of course, uh, we're talking again about all the immigrant situation and how they are being integrated into society. And in my opinion, again, has to do with New World Religion and bringing us all together where we want to be or not so we're more easily handled. Well, the EU actually, or as they say, you, actually you. is forcing a tiny village in Italy located in the mountains above Verona, of only seven residents to take seven in. Seven people. It's, seven like a, it's like a house. Residents. It's not a village. It's someone's they house. They call it a village. And, you know, in these European countries, they have very small villages. The EU directive has ordered them to take in 80 migrants. In that one little house? In, in the one village. There's probably no buildings. And they, well, they're all probably abandoned. That's what <coughs> happened. That's why they're sending them to these mm -hmm. places. So they said that there are plans to resettle them, according to the mayor, and who is worried about the numbers being unrealistic yeah, and I will have so. a negative impact on the residents. You think? Only seven residents, but 80 immigrants. Do you and think that 20, makes sense? 26 African asylum seekers have already arrived. Now, the issue is a lot of people think, you know, haven't been there, that these are families coming in who need to, you know, have a place to go. And I've been in these places, and they are single, young African men. With, who don't speak the language, don't have jobs, don't have anything to do, and no place to go. So why are they being put into these towns? Okay? Well, that's very strange. But I report on that in detail. I'm not going to go into it because I have a lot of stories. You should have watched the podcast because I keep you focused. And in Belgium, there was a politician... I was just in Belgium. I know, who launched a book called The Resistance. It's about stopping the Islamization of cities like Brussels and Antwerp. They say that Muslims have created territorial Islamic enclaves. And so what they're basically doing in big cities, the native population becomes a minority. It says in these areas, the women wear headscarves or hajib. The shops only sell halal. Everybody speaks Arabic. It says that um, people are afraid to go in there. The mayor is now an iman, and they have local drug gangs that terrorize the police and a no-go zones. But the Islam is supposed to be against drugs and gangs. That's what they're claiming, according to this politician. I so don't know. I don't really, know that they're really not Muslims. They're terror. They're terrorists. Yes, and this is groups. the issue with the migrants and the immigration: is these people aren't. As, you know, you're reading the news, you're like all oh, these poor families. It's not that. Not poor families. No, they're sending in people who can do a lot of damage, and it's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. And of course, this time of year, there Jesus is always in the news. I wonder why. Just because it's Christmas? Maybe. Universal just released the first trailer of Rooney Mara in the title role of Mary Magdalene opposite her real-life beau Joaquin Phoenix as Jesus. 
No. Hmm. They reveal in this film a tender relationship between Mary and Jesus. See, They're I supposed told to be you. very emotional. I told you. And it says that Mary defies her family to join a new social movement led by the charismatic Jesus of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. Now, remember I told you buzzwords to listen for. In the trailer, a troubled Mary is cleansed of her demons. That's a buzzword that they're putting in your mind. I'm going to explain that. Of her demons by Jesus, who smiles and said, There are no demons here, as he lays his hand on her forehead. That's not where he laid her, his hands. She watches while Jesus heals the sick, and when she points out that women are too scared to approach him, the Son of God tells her to do it. So they're put, making a whole new story so here. So was he sexually inappropriate with Mary Magdalene? No, I don't know. Maybe. She probably would have reported him these days. Yeah, me too. Right? Isn't that that hashtag You keep thing? your hands off me, Jesus. Okay, anything else you want to say about the demon word? Yes, but not here. It's going to be in the January class. No, yeah, okay. And then going, then I'll go back to my news about Jesus, that there are new tests at Jesus' presumed tomb uh, that backs traditional beliefs. Mm -hmm. Apparently... There's a new study out that offers no further evidence whether Jesus was or was not actually buried at this site in Jerusalem. He was not there. That's what no. they're claiming. But it's consistent with the historical belief that the Romans built a monument there some 300 years after his death. Right. So how could you tell? Right. The Romans copied things. They never came up with anything that's unique. Okay. Apparently this is called the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. 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 I was there. Was and encased in an elaborate shine called an edicule, which I have never mm, heard of. What's your language? But the tests, this was interesting, the tests on the mortar were done in connection with recent restoration work, which included the cave where he was supposedly buried. Mm -hmm. Tradition holds that Constantine had the monument to Jesus built on what was thought to be the site of his burial. When he became the Roman's empire began the Roman Empire's transition to Christianity mm -hmm. in the 4th mm -hmm. century so AD. So the Romans created an, a place so that would match what their rewritten Bible was about. Yes, and it says other monuments were built over it in right. later years. Right. And then it says the most dramatic moment happened last October 2016 and the renovation when the cave, thought to be the tomb of Jesus, was open for the first time. Mm -hmm. Now this part... And it said Jesus was here. The most interesting, the Greek Orthodox, Armenian, and Roman Catholic denominations share the custody of this church. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to me, again, New World Religion, let's blend them all together, let's have a fake thing. Of course, the Armenian church think they're the only one in the original, which they're actually closer to it than the others. They are. And then, of course, one of our favorite topics, mind control mm. and trauma. Never heard of it. Child trauma can be inherited by future generations according to a new study, which uh, is what well, we... Which is what I said 30 years ago. Exactly. That's the new study said that now. Right. Now they they're got telling millions, you. I got Zippo. Yeah. The study examining the offspring of children displaced during the Second World War, apparently they took about 3,000 children from the Finnish people and put them to Sweden to try to save them when they were little. That was a big mistake because they hate each other. Yeah. Go on. And then they said that the children were placed in foster families, they were forced to learn Swedish, and then they were laid to return back to Finland. Of course, they have all kinds of psychological like, problems. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, which they mm -hmm. then have passed on to their mm -hmm. offspring. And so, of course, this is a drama now going Brilliant. on in Finland. Brilliant. Whoever thought of that one. But when we look at mind control and trauma and programming, you can see we've been telling you this, that it is passed on for generations. It becomes generational. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's much more inherent than you think. And in our exercises, we teach you what to do about that. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a new therapy that rewires the brain. And what do they do? Instead of drugs, they beam magnetic pulses deep inside the patient's brain to change the way depression symptoms are perceived. Mm -hmm. This is called transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, and it's FDA-approved to treat depression. This is happening at the UCLA Health, right? Oh, that's an oxymoron. Yeah. By pulsing the brain with energy repeatedly, we're changing the way that area works. But also, we're changing the way the whole brain network works. Now, doesn't that sound like... ELF uh, mind control. A little bit. But people, of course, are lining up. Remember, they're I not going to. They're not going to come and get you from your house. You're going to go line up, mm -hmm. right? And I, I'm not lining up. I'm not lining up. And then, of course, on with. I keep telling you, as well as part of New World Religion and death and watching people die. Again, they're not going to come and get you. You're going to push your own button. Here's another I thing. I wish I had a button. It's called the Sarco, which is a new suicide machine. A Sarco. Sarco. Mm -hmm. It was developed by Australian doctor who Newsweek says is the Elon Musk of assisted suicide. And he unveiled the apparatus, guess what, just days after the lawmakers in the state of Victorian Australia, Australia voted to legalize euthanasia. Remember, we have a problem, now we have a solution. Just mm -hmm.
days away. Here you go. I have a list of who they could be. Now, on. this is interesting. They're calling this for people who make uh, choices, rational suicides. Oh. How, do you, how do you know about that? Yeah. And they claim it's painless and an easy way to go. So people, if they're dying, how do they know to come back and tell them it was painless? That I don't understand. Right. That's so, true. And then they claim that it could... Well, Trump talks to the dead, so maybe... Maybe. Know. It comfortably fits a human. It's like, okay, I'm going to die. Do I really care if I'm going to be comfortable? So they're well, going. I wouldn't want to die uncomfortably. But but the point is, is that they're making this is like that again, oxymoron. You're going to die, so, but let's make you comfortable. So when you set, you settle into the pod, then the user pushes a button, and the chamber fills up with liquid nitrogen to bring the oxygen level down to about five percent. And you pass out. And that's it says that it's like an airplane cabin depressurizing, uh -huh. and then they go on first of all to call it painless. Now they say you feel almost no pain. Almost. Almost no, no. pain. And again, how do they know? Mm -hmm. But hey, here's the good part because guess what? The after death comes the chamber you do it in can be your coffin. Oh, perfect. And you can no mess. Right, and then you can reuse the base. Now the base can be three D printed and assembled in any location. The blueprints will be free, but guess what? The users, before they can actually push the button, because they're given a four-digit code, oh. they have to go through a mental questionnaire that's available online. Now, how While they're in there? I guess. <laughs> so, how reliable is this thing, Wait, really? let me see. They're, they're encouraging you to kill yourself. And it, mm -hmm. then it says, in addition to the new laws in Victoria, assisted suicide is now legal in Belgium, Canada, Colombia, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. Well, if I lived in any of those countries, I'd want to kill myself, too. And then it says in the Netherlands, it's becoming an increasingly popular choice. Dutch people are nuts. And in the U.S., only terminally ill patients can opt for assisted suicide. And they, of course, they need two doctors to verify it. However, I've told people my mother was on hospice. They took away her drugs, which she needed to survive, and they killed her. So, in my opinion, that was assisted mm -hmm. suicide. They just gave her more and more morphine well, so that she would feel. Her, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. Because she wasn't in her right mind, but she made the choice, mm -hmm. right? And so, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, they killed my mother. Person of the Year. Did you read about this one? You this know, is... because I wasn't nominated and it's not fair. All right. It's, this time they named, quote, the silence breakers, unquote, men and women who spoke out against sexual abuse and harassment. Mm -hmm. And the editor-in-chief said this is the fastest moving social change we've seen in decades. Yeah, let me put it, it's the fastest mind control program that's been activated on the media. Okay, so remember I told you about the, the triggers, rage and all that stuff? Collectively, these people have helped turn shame into outrage. That's what oh, you want to feel. that's much better. And have some outrage yeah, instead. And fear into fury. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, outrage and fury for Christmas. There you go. So I think, okay. Then Angela Lansbury. Most of you are familiar with her. I love Angela. She's now Lansbury. a dame, you know, because the queen. She's a dame? The queen I'm a knight. Her. Yeah, but the queen knighted her. Oh, screw the queen, okay? Yeah. Well, I'm sure somebody must have at one point. At some point. Anyway, Angela Lansbury says this was interesting that attractive women must sometimes take the blame for sexual harassment. Oh, well, that depends now, what they do with their. I say responsibility stuff. is different than blame per se. I remember, she's like 93. She's 92. Wow. She said she's never been sexually harassed. Good for her. And she said, well, I think she's lying. <gasps> Dame, I Angela? think so. She says that women go out of their way to make themselves attractive to men, and because they have, it's backfired, and that's why they are where they are. I think that's really <laughs> she messed should up be a thinking. Muslim. Uh, yes, but, but I thought it was very <laughs> backwards, strange she thinking. Be Imam Angela. Now, after she said that, the rape crisis, uh, England and Wales said in a statement, "It's a deeply help unhelpful myth that rape and other forms of sexual violence are caused or provoked." by women's sexuality or attractiveness, because remember what we talk about, rape is a crime of power. Well, you know, it's true, because a lot of these Muslim women that are covered up with their hijab, they get raped all the time anyway. They do. So they didn't expose themselves. Right, exactly. It is a crime of power. Now, what I feel, because I'm putting together, remember, all these facts I'm telling you about is I believe they are redefining rape. And I've said this since this, all the rape stories started coming out, that rape will be part of New World Religion. And we're seeing it here. And I have a couple of stories that support what I say, and I want you to keep thinking on what I'm telling you and listening to this. Listening. This is back to Finland. A 23-year-old migrant was acquitted from aggravated rape despite having intercourse with a 10-year-old girl. Remember, in those countries, that's all of, normal. that's normal. So they're just carrying forward what they already know, and they're doing it here. So the court said it was not clear that the girl was unable to defend herself or her lack and express her lack of consent and sentenced him to only three years in prison. 
So then we have two, profess two Finnish professors of criminal law that uh, said in an interview with a newspaper that the case would ultimately warrant the attention of the Supreme Court in Finland because the Finnish people are outraged at this they decision. And they say, quote, the Supreme Court should set a precedent on whether or not a 10-year-old can be ruled to be able to express their will in circumstances such as these. I'm personally of the opinion that a 10-year-old would be unable to understand the matter. Right. And therefore... And even if she consented, it's not. It's still It's wrong. rape. And thereby defend themselves against an adult. So this is going to be an ongoing case we're going to see, and that's part of why we're bringing these Muslim men over here. They're having sex with young girls... These men, it's in their culture to do that. They're bringing their brides, who they can marry, I think is, you know, any age. Eight. Eight, and then they're not supposed to have sex with them until they're actually menstruating, but that's, you know, like 12 or 13. In fact, I know someone in our own community who's a Muslim who has a mother who's only 13 years older than him. Really? Yes. So it's, it's out there, and so their whole culture is different than ours. So while we consider that pedophilia, to them it's normal, and they're in... Um, integrating that into Western culture where you're learning to accept that. Now, as, and remember what I'm telling you, they are redefining rape, so listen to this one. Voice singer Melanie Martinez acu was accused of sexual assault by her former best friend. Now, the, the best friend, they say the name is Timothy Heller, although this is a female, so I don't know if they got that first name incorrect or not, I don't know. But this Heller is a musician, and she claimed that Martinez performed oral sex and penetrated her with a sex toy without her consent. Again, they're calling this rape. So now women can rape as well as men. Well, I've heard that before anyway. Heller wrote, I never said yes, I said no repeatedly, but she used her power over me and broke me down just so there is no confusion. I was molested by my best friend. So she didn't intentionally intend to name her alleged abuser, but with all the other stories coming now, she's doing it. And she says, friendship does not equal consent. Silence doesn't equal consent. I wish it wasn't so hard for me to convince myself of these things. So they are redefining rape. And remember the, the story I reported on last week about the White House, they hung mistletoe, and they said, now that's inappropriate. Guess what? Police Service of Northern Ireland tweeted that a kiss under the mistletoe without consent is rape. Right? That's the bit drinking too much Guinness so, over there. Some accuse the force of trivializing rape and being social justice warriors. They actually tweeted to their 159,000 Twitter followers, quote, If you bump into that special someone under the mistletoe tonight, remember that without consent, it is rape. Now, it wasn't long before the warning was shared hundreds of times across the social media platform. And in my opinion, that's why it was tweeted. They wanted this out there. They want people to think, hmm. Maybe they were joking. No, this says they were very serious about it. And so it just is saying, why are they calling this rape? So I'm telling you, they're redefining what rape is because eventually that will be considered normal. Pedophilia, all these things. And then we have the digisexual, which I have been what talking, does that mean? talking to you about this, but they're always throwing out these new terms. People whose sexual appetites are predominantly satisfied by the virtual world. And That's so like everybody on the earth. There is a new study, all these new studies, right? That says there's no question that sex bots are coming. People will form an Pet sex bots are coming. Ha uh ha. -huh. People will form an intense connection with their robot companions. The robots will be tailor made to meet people's desires and will do things that human partners cannot or will not do. Can you rape a robot? I don't know. It says that they'll do things that could harm relationships, possibly cause divorce, bring feelings of shame and guilt, as well as leaving users in debt because these things are expensive. Mm -hmm. But the new study concludes that overall the impact of digisexuality will be positive, allowing people to experience more sexual pleasure and have new experiences, particularly for people who struggle to find human partners who, or who have experienced sexual What was the name of that past? Woody Allen movie? about the future and there was an orgasmatron you go inside this thing and it gives know. you an orgasm I don't that know. was so funny but now they're having I and mean, this article came with a whole list of new things androsexual means primarily attracted to men asexual that's what it, you know homosexual was. Little, little little or no attraction to others bicurious cisgender now that's when you believe you're the sex you were assigned at birth that's when you do yeah, it's like we would be called a cisgender because I'm a female uh -huh. and I was assigned a female and identified as a female. No, you weren't assigned. Female. You were born that way. Yeah, well, that's what they that's were not claiming. assigning it. 
A demisexual has little or no capacity to experience sexual attraction until a strong romantic or emotional connection is formed. Okay, that's somebody with abandonment issues. That's not a demisexual. Well, but it means, no, that they have to have a strong romantic or emotional connection. In other words, they can't just have sex to have right. sex. Right, they have abandonment issues. No. I think so. No, you're not understanding the definition. Yes, I understand the definition. What's the definition? Little or no capacity to experience sexual attraction until a strong romantic or emotional connection is formed. Yes, they have to have a strong romantic emotional connection to have sex. I understand. Okay, abandonment is you go from person to person to person, not that. Digisexual, which I just told you about. Gynosexual is when you're only attracted to women. I guess maybe that's a new term instead well, of lesbianism. Maybe you're attracted to a gynecologist. Maybe. Pansexual, that's, it doesn't matter Peter what you Pan, are. Peter Pan, attracted to Peter Pan. Here's a new one. Scoliosexual, being primarily that's when you have a bad spine. attracted to genderqueer, transgender, transsexual, and non-binary binary people. Then the third gender, a person who's either a man or a woman. Then, of course, transgender, transsexual. Now... We have to memorize all these well, things? Well, it gets worse. It gets worse. And this is a true story because I researched it 16 times to make sure it wasn't one of those fake stories. The Canadian Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario hosted, get this, an LGGBDTTTIQQAAPP inclusiveness training <laughs> session. Only Canada, A. Okay, this They're is for... So fucked up there. And this really. is for elementary school teachers because they want the students to succeed, reduce staff anxiety and stress, and it create a much more welcoming and accepting environment. So, the stress is knowing all those letters that's what the people in, the said. Right, or in the right format. Yeah, but so here it is. Lesbian, gay, genderqueer, bisexual, demisexual, transgender, transsexual, two-spirit, intersex, queer, questioning, asexual, allies, pansexual, and polyamorous. Elementary school teachers, people. Elementary school teachers. Okay, that's why they work in Canada, because <laughs> nobody else would take them. I'm just saying this is so ridiculous. But if it's happening there, it's going to happen in other places. Mm -hmm. So, then, here we go to, this is a person, and here's another one for you. This is called an objectum sexual. What? This woman's name is Amanda Liberty. Pay attention to the last Amanda. name. Because I'm going to tell you why, in a minute, why she has that last name. Amanda Liberty, 33 years old. She got engaged to a 90-year-old chandelier. She's an objectum sexual, which is someone who is sexually attracted to inanimate objects. Okay? Um, go on. So anyway, she's named her wife to be Lumiere, but she also is in an open relationship with Lumiere, so she sleeps so with... So she's a lesbian chandelier lover. No, it's the same. Because a wife, isn't it a woman? Yeah. And she... And her wife to be well, so. Well, maybe she. It's a female. But maybe if the chandelier was a male, then it would be her husband. So to it's be. a female chandelier. As, yes, that's what she says. So she's in an open relationship with this chandelier. She proposed to the chandelier on Valentine's yeah, Day yeah, yeah. to signify their long-lasting love, mm -hmm. and she hopes at some point to have a commitment ceremony. And she's never been engaged before, so it's I very why. new and exciting. So she goes to bed with another chandelier called Jewel. So she's cheating on the other chandelier already? Yeah, because she's in an open relationship. She's a chandelier uh, cheater. Yeah. Okay, but I want you to listen to this one. Her first relationship was with a drum kit when she was 14. Then she fell in love with... What the is she, a, a Disney character? It's getting close. She fell in love with the Statue of Liberty, who she calls Libby. So that's why she actually changed her last name to Liberty. Because mm -hmm. she was in love with the Statue of Liberty. Because she needs to be in a mental institution. Okay, speaking of that, again, I'm, going, I'm talking all this New World Religion s stuff. I reported on you a few weeks ago in Colorado Springs about a woman hunting, or about the police hunting for a woman called the Mad Pooper, oh, yeah. who was caught defecating in front of various houses. Well, you gotta go, you gotta go. Now there is a, a man in Sacramento who came home, found what appeared to be dog poop at the bottom of the driveway, and he found that a woman who was delivering a package for Amazon actually did that in his driveway. Okay. It was on the security camera. What do you mean, okay? I'm just saying, okay. So he called Amazon, told them to come and clean it up. I did they? They sent the drone to do it, perhaps? But And then also, there, yeah, those of you have those little emojis on your phone. I I don't have emojis anywhere on Anyway, so they, right now there's a little smiley pile of poo on there. Now they want to create a frowny pile of poo, and that create a lot of problems 
because apparently there are people who vote on this and who create them. Mm -hmm. So one of these people says, what are we going to have next? A crying pile of poo? I think so. A pile of poo with tongue sticking out? A pile of poo with question marks okay. or eyes? On and on and on. But remember, this poo stuff is going to continue to grow because there are people who do poo on each other and urinate on each other for sexual gratification. And, speaking of B-U-T-T's, mm. in Japan, did you know, and I looked this one up, there is a practice called Kancho, where Japanese kids actually stick their fingers into other people's butts when they're not looking. And in fact, it's so common that they have to be told when they come to the U.S. not to do that That's... because they'll be gone, they'll be put in jail. And they even do that to their teachers. They should not do that with Kadazura. So, but I did look this up. So I wanted you to tell you this. And my last story, because this, I think it continually more bizarre, but when they first started doing, and again, as you know, I don't use the word boob. I use the word breast because a boob has to do with, you know, like... A dopey. Dopey. So now they're calling, there's a Christmas boob new craze in Manchester, UK, which trust me, that it's going to be all over. They have a woman exposing one of her breasts, and... That's not unusual in They put a red nose on the end with eyes. For Christmas, that root of the red yes. nose breast? Yeah. Yes, and then they put two antlers here, and, oh, all, the, cute. and all the women are doing this. That's and very not cute. only that, yes. You want me to do that and sit here on the podcast okay. like that? all right. And then the men are doing it, so if I do it, you have to do it. No, but they do their other part. No, the men do this. Well, I wouldn't. I'd do my other well, part. Well, you can't. Yeah, I would. Well, you can't. Why? Because. But anyway, let's check out the link. It's totally ridiculous. So, anyway, this is what's happening in the, the world. And no, it's not more crazy than anywhere else. It's just crazy. Oh, yeah, it is. No, the craziness changes, but the world is always crazy. And you want to know why aliens do what they do? Hello. Yeah, so, you want to come and take... Come, come to our okay, real so world. Okay, so we have the webinars. We have yes. to go fast. We have yes. the webinars the rest of this month of December. Yes. Uh, end of the month, and we're going to be in Nevis yes. to do the uh, lectures and the uh, in investiture. investiture for the new Templar group. Then uh, we have the January class, uh, amazing surprise guests from Montauk Project and Australia and elsewhere. And we have the LifeWave table. Yes, so and then back. the end of January to February, I'll be filming a movie in New York, and I'll be going to Ecuador. And then uh, Mexico in March. Mexico, I'm only with the M. And, and, and we'll talk about the rest next week. When we All right, so out. like, comment, share, subscribe, pass on to your friends, blah, 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 blah. Right? Yeah, just don't pass on. Yeah. Just pass on to your friends. My blog this month is on stress. You don't want to miss that one. Right, this time of year. Yeah. All right, so bye for now. Bye.